I'm Hugh Collingbourne, Director of Technology with Sapphire Steel Software. In this tutorial, I'll be explaining a few of the fundamental features of object orientation in ActionScript 3. My plan over the next few tutorials is to create a very simple exploring style of adventure game, one in which the user can move around from room to room, assuming there are exits. Before we can move from room to room, however, we need to have some rooms to work with. In other words, we need some room objects. The first step is to create a room class. A class is like a blueprint that defines the structure of a specific type of object. Many individual objects, in this case rooms, can be constructed from the same blueprint which we've defined in the room class. Here I've created a new ActionScript file called room.as, which contains the class called room. In ActionScript you need to make sure that your files and the classes they contain share the same name. This file has been placed into a subdirectory or folder, which I call Classes, though you can pick any name you like. This folder defines what's called a package, and the folder name has to be placed after the package keyword. Once again, the agreement of the folder and the package name is important. A package is a scoping unit. A, a package, in effect, hides the classes it contains from other code until it's explicitly imported, and we'll look at that in a moment. Here I've created a class using the public and class keywords and the class name, followed by a pair of curly brackets. Underneath this there's a public function, with no return type, and unusually for ActionScript no void keyword either. This is the class constructor. It's called when a new object is created, and it may take one or more arguments which can be used to initialize the fields, the internal data of the object. Let's create a piece of data now. I'm creating a public string variable called name, and this will simply define the name of each room. I'll add a string argument to the constructor. And once that receives the string argument, it can be assigned to the value of the name data item, which we just created. Now, having done the assignment here, we're ready to go into the mxml file which defines the user interface of the application. I'm working in Amethyst and so I'm going to switch to the Visual Designer where I've already added a button and a text field, a text area. Now I'm going to switch to the code and you can see that I've given the text area an ID called TA so that I can refer to it by name in my ActionScript code. Now, in order to have access to the room class, I need to import it from its package, which, as you remember, is called classes. So classes.room. Now I can create some room variables. Private var r1 colon room. And a bit of copying and pasting, I will create my next room variable, which is called r2. I'm now ready to create a, a function, which I call create rooms which will, in fact, create some new room objects. So private function create rooms. No arguments and no return type, so it's void. When I create the room objects, R1 and R2, I'm going to use the new keyword. Then I call the constructor which, you recall, has the same name here, room, as the class itself. My constructor takes a single string argument, the room name. While each object is based on the blueprint defined by the class, its data is unique, so each room can have a different name. And here I'll just edit R2 to give it its own name. Now, to test it out, I'll access um, the name of the object R1 and R2, that's the name field, and use the plus operator to concatenate them into a string, which I'll then display as the text of the text area with the ID TA. And finally, I just need to wire up this function to the button click event. So I go back down to the MXML defining the button and add the function name to respond to the click event. And now I'm ready to build and run the program. As I said, I'm using Amethyst, so 
in order to run it, I just select Debug, Start Without Debugging. And after a few moments, the finished program pops up in a browser. And when it does that, I can just click the button to try it out. In the next tutorial, I'll build rooms with exits and start working on creating a map of linked rooms that the player will be able to move around in.